Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 10th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from London, England. Of course, today we'll have to start with Microsoft's patch Tuesday. We got patches for a total of 77 different vulnerabilities, 15 of which are rated as critical. Among those vulnerabilities, there are two privilege escalation vulnerabilities that have already been exploited in the wild. Now, five additional vulnerabilities have been disclosed by Google's Project Zero ahead of this patch Tuesday. None of these vulnerabilities have been exploited yet. The one that sort of sounded the most dangerous one was CVE 2019-1068. This one is this Microsoft SQL Server remote code execution vulnerability, but exploitation requires that an attacker is able to submit SQL queries to the Microsoft SQL Server. So possibly exploitable uh, via maybe SQL injection in a vulnerable web application. Interesting to note also that there is one vulnerability, CVE 2019-1130, that's another evaluation of privilege vulnerability that was reported by Sandbox Escaper. In the past, Sandbox Escaper tended to release details about vulnerabilities publicly via Twitter, this particular vulnerability appears to have been reported privately to Microsoft. Other than the fact that the number of vulnerabilities is a bit higher than what we usually see, the rest of the vulnerabilities are pretty much standard. Uh, most of the critical vulnerabilities are confined to the scripting engines and the browser. So again, your web browser remains a huge target here and you definitely should try to apply these patches quickly. Now, one vulnerability that's not actually related to the browser is a uh, critical remote code execution vulnerability in the DHCP server. That sort of continues that trend of uh, vulnerabilities related to DHCP. I already noted in the past that we had a number of vulnerabilities this year in Microsoft's DHCP client. So it'll be interesting what we're seeing here in terms of details regarding this vulnerability. Also, a denial of service vulnerability in Windows's DNS server. This one, of course, is only rated as important. And of course, Microsoft's updates also include an update for Adobe's Flash Player. This month, only one vulnerability is being addressed, but it is an arbitrary code execution that is rated as critical. Interestingly, we don't have an Adobe Flash update this month. Instead, Adobe released three updates, one for Adobe Dreamweaver, one for Adobe Experience Manager, and the last one for Adobe Pritch Creative Cloud. But probably the most interesting vulnerability award today goes to Zoom, at least Zoom, the video conferencing software running on the Mac. If you're installing Zoom on a Mac, then it will also automatically install a web server listening on port 19,421. This was done in order to prevent Zoom from actually asking for permission in order to access the camera as it starts up. So what happens is if you are joining a Zoom meeting, it will actually send a request to this web server to start up the Zoom software on the local system without any user interaction. This can potentially be used in order to force a user to join a meeting, which then also can be used to automatically enable the user's webcam. While this is bad, this is not even all of it. If you uninstall Zoom, this web server is not automatically uninstalled. It remains running. And if you then join a Zoom meeting again, and well, uh, this fails because the Zoom software isn't installed, this web server will reinstall it for you again without user interaction. 
Also, as I'm recording this, Zoom has not yet published a complete uninstaller that will remove the Zoom software, including this web server. So you have to figure out manually where it's loaded from and remove the associated files. John Lightshoe, who originally discovered uh, this vulnerability, reported it uh, to Zoom early March of this year. Took him an awful long time to get any kind of a response and a reasonable fix out of Zoom. And now he went public uh, after any disclosure deadline that he said expired and Zoom continued to not really take this vulnerability serious. This vulnerability could also affect other products that are essentially sort of a rebranded version of Zoom, most notably Ring Central, which is really just sort of a different skin on top of the Zoom system. Well, by the time you're listening to this, uh, Zoom may have come up with a patch and an uninstaller. I highly recommend that you uninstall Zoom on the Mac and let's first wait for the entire fallout of this. Maybe they can get rid of this web server altogether uh, before you consider reinstalling Zoom on the Mac. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.